Hi guys, I'm Natalie from Positively Primal and I'm going to go over the very simple steps that you can take at home to make delicious and nutritious broccoli sprouts for your dog. It's very easy and cheap to make. We're only going to need a few items. Number one, a tablespoon measure. This is a 32 ounce wide mouth jar. You will either need to purchase a mesh, stainless steel mesh. I like the ones with the dips in it and I'll put a link to the ones that I use or you can just cut some needlepoint or on um, screen and put that on. And you'll also need water and of course, broccoli seeds. We like to use organic GMO free broccoli seeds used specifically for sprouting. I order my organic broccoli seeds online and I transfer them to a clear air tight container which I keep in a dark cabinet. Begin by taking two tablespoons of organic broccoli seeds and putting them into a 32 ounce mason jar. The next step is to cover this with, I prefer filtered water. I use a big Berkey system which removes chlorine and fluoride, but you could just use tap water. Preferably try to find some form of filtered water. And you wanna cover it about one and a half cups worth or a couple inches, like two or three inches worth of water. You'll see them slowly falling to the ground. You're gonna to wanna to tap them and get those extra seeds that are floating on top to settle to the bottom as much as possible. This is gonna go into a warm, dark place for about eight to 12 hours. You just put it in the cabinet overnight and then you rinse it in the morning. I already have one that has been sitting overnight, so we're gonna show you the next step now. Here is the broccoli seeds which have been sitting in a warm dark space for approximately 12 hours. After the initial 12 hours, we're going to open this up and look for seeds that are floating at the top. These seeds are likely not going to sprout. So we're just going to try to lightly pull them out. And because I don't like to waste anything, I actually put these in my compost bin. <laughs> nutrients. So I just grab all the seeds that are floating. These are seeds that are likely not going to sprout. They go into the compost. Now we're going to go ahead and close this back up. We want to rinse this water out. It's a little murky. The phytic acid, the anti-nutrients that surround the seed to protect it from predators, isn't that great for us, is being released into the water. Now you could dump this down the sink. I prefer to reuse everything. So I am going to save this water, put it into a watering can to water the plants in my home. And we're gonna wanna do one more rinse to help get that murky stuff off. You don't need too much water. Just rinsing it off, pour it in your watering can or down the sink if you prefer. You can see the breaking open of some of these seeds, but we're gonna wanna put it back into a dark place because it, they actually haven't sprouted yet. You need to have this angled at a 45 degree angle in order to still drain out all that excess water. You also want to have airflow underneath. So a 45 angle is best. If you put it all the way over like this, you have a potential for mold and bacterial growth. Now you can use a glass container. I use these little sprouting stands and I put a paper towel underneath. The key here is to have airflow so you don't get mold and bacterial growth. This is going to go back into our cabinet for about 12 hours. We're gonna start rinsing these seeds twice a day, every day, until we get the desired growth and it's ready to eat. If you don't have direct sunlight on your counter, you can actually leave it on your countertop. You just don't want direct sunlight hitting it. So whatever works for you. It can go back into a cabinet like I have right here, or you can put it out in the, in the countertop as long as you don't have direct sunlight. It's 12 hours later, you've done this right before you went to work. You're gonna do the same exact thing. I have the date on here. This is from a day ago. Little white stem shoots starting to come out of the seed. Again, we're going to pour some fresh filtered water. It doesn't have to be too much just enough to really get everything soaked. Swirl it around, make sure you get all those seeds, especially that 
are up by the top. You might want to do this over your sink so you don't get water all over the place like I am. And once again, I collect my water from the seeds and I use them to water the plants. So this only takes a few seconds. Wouldn't do it any more than 30 seconds of rinsing. Get all that water out. Now you can put it in the sink to drip most of the water or some people use glass containers like this to catch the water as long as you get it at a 45 degree angle. Important thing is that the water drains out and you have airflow to prevent bacterial overgrowth. So after about three to four days, you're going to see some yellowing as the sprouts emerge. At this point, you want to put it into direct sunlight. The sunlight is what turns the sprouts green, and that's the chlorophyll. That's a very nutritious chlorophyll that we want to have for our dogs. Typically, I'm putting this out by my windowsill by day three or four, and this is what I would consider completely sprouted, and this took six days. And you can see how green this one is. It's extremely green filled with chlorophyll because it has a beautiful window with lots of sunlight. And you rinse it the same way as you have been rinsing the unsprouted seeds. We just pour the water in. Sometimes I let this sit a little longer because it is full. You just shake it around. Make sure that everything really gets water that it's gonna help it grow. Nothing dries out. At this point, when I start to place this in the windowsill, to use this little Ikea tray I found, and um, I think it's a spice rack, I'm not sure, but it works wonderful on my glass shelves over my kitchen window. So I have this to catch excess water. I put one of my stands with the lip inside of the tray, uh, put it upside down, that way I don't have to wait for rinsing, and it's ready to go in the sun. And then I can just wipe out the excess water and it's not affecting my glass shelves. I actually installed two glass shelves because I'm making so many jars of broccoli sprouts for our rescue dogs. I mean, I especially use this for detox for my own dogs. I was recently in a hotel room at an expo with my dogs and the hotel room reeked of smoke. We actually requested to be moved to another um, room and that room smelled like smoke too. And cigarette smoke releases benzene and benzene is a horrible carcinogen acknowledged by the World Health Organization. If you've seen the health benefits video of sulforaphane, you'll know that sulforaphane is a rapid detoxer of benzene. So this is something I not only use for detox for my own dogs, but all the rescues that come into our rescue. It's a part of their initial two to three week detox, depending on the lifestyle that they had. One thing some people notice, the broccoli seeds starts to sprout, or really many of the different seeds, they'll see a lot of fuzz and they'll think that's mold. That's actually just the little feelers on uh, the tail of the sprouts as it starts to grow. So that's not something to be concerned about. So at this stage, it's going to be ready to be served. Some people like to rinse this entire jar in a big glass bowl and let what's called the holes, those are the expelled seeds, float to the top and then they skim those holes off so that you just have sprouts. One of the issues with the uh, protective hole prior to sprouting is that it has an anti-metabolite that inhibits the conversion of glucoraphanin um, into sulforaphane. But we don't really have to worry about that at this stage because of the sprouting process. But if you don't like the taste or you think your pets don't like the taste, you can do that extra step. One of the other reasons you might want to remove the hull is if you plan to store this as fresh in the refrigerator. Because the hulls can absorb moisture, it actually creates an environment that is more predisposed to bacterial overgrowth such as mold. However, I have so many dogs that I basically toss this in the blender and serve it immediately. So it depends on your situation which steps you want to take next. We're at the stage where we can serve this to our dogs. It's ready to be eaten. In order to have a bioavailable form of sulforaphane, this needs to be crushed, chopped, chewed, with humans it's no problem, or blended because the myrosinase, the enzyme that 
converts glucorathenin is in a separate cell wall. And the only way to create that activation into a form of bioavailable sulforaphane is to crush those cell walls and have them interact. You can, you know, take a few sprouts, chop it up or just smush it and throw it on their food and I'm sure they're going to get it just fine. Um, I'll often have 10 foster dogs and it's just difficult to make all the time. So I may either make what I call a green broth and they all get some poured um, into their bowls. I'm gonna show you how I make molds of um, sulforaphane to give daily or to give out to foster homes. So I have a Vitamix, which is a industrial powered um, mixer, which I absolutely love. You just grab the sprouts, toss them all in. Because broccoli has a kind of a sulfur smell and taste, it might not be extremely palatable to them. But what I usually do is take a medium that is palatable and I make sure it to include fat because we want to make the chlorophyll, we want to make those nutrients and vitamins more bioavailable. So including fat somehow, you could throw a whole free range organic egg from a local farm market in here, throw some bone broth that you've made, or um, I like to add some raw goat milk kefir that I have sitting out on the counter. And depending how many dogs you're making for, you know, you decide how much you're going to use. So what's great about kefir is there are some incredible benefits and I have a great video coming out about that. An excellent probiotic that has been traced back over 5,000 years to the Telecom and Desert. So I'm gonna throw a few grains, kefir grains in there, our base, which makes it more palatable to the dogs. So at this point, I can just blend this and pour it into their food bowls with their regular meals and have them eat just this. I'm gonna go ahead and make molds and freeze them so I can hand out daily. If you're doing therapeutic doses, I'd be a little stricter on the amounts that you're giving to each dog. They did find a toxicity level of uh, sulforaphane and it's kind of ridiculously high. It, it was a rat study and they found that um, rats having a very high dose of sulforaphane um, did have seizures. Even though sulforaphane has been shown to inhibit seizures at the toxicity level, it can actually create that. That toxicity level would uh, probably cover this entire counter. I don't think you could actually get that level into a dog without forcing it. Sometimes I add a little bit of ghee or coconut oil, um, a little extra palatability, and we like that healthy fat. And that's about it. This 132 ounce jar of sprouts contains about amount of sulforaphane. But when I use it as a green broth for the dogs, they're all running to the kitchen because they love the stuff. I just pour it in and then put their regular meals like chicken necks and organs and a variety of stuff. And of course we cut back on food because this is calories. For the gels, we just pour the molds, put it in the freezer. It will hold wonderfully and you have very nutrient rich sulforaphane gels. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more like it, please consider liking, sharing, or commenting below.